The Fed's open market committee isn't scheduled to meet again until after the election, but today's jobs report and the president's positive COVID-19 test could be on Chair Jerome Powell's mind when he speaks next week. Our Fed correspondent, Brian Chung, is here with us now. Um, Brian, look, we know that Powell has been uh, pushing Congress to approve another stimulus plan. Do you think that this jobs report together with the news from the president might bring some added urgency to it? Well, I think if you look at what Ian Shepardson over at Pantheon Macro has said, the, the summary really is that the momentum for this economic recovery is fading, which should, in theory, provide a little bit more push for those on Capitol Hill to provide that fiscal stimulus that, as you mentioned, Alexis, uh, the Federal Reserve Chairman has been pushing so hard on in previous weeks. When you look at the headline number, in addition to the fact that it missed estimates, it's just simply a slower pace of job gains relative to the previous months that we had seen at just 661,000 job gains in the month of September. Now, I do want to note that this is kind of in line with what the Federal Reserve has already modeled in for the year. The unemployment rate falling to 7.9% uh, does seem to track pretty closely with the Federal Reserve's expectation based off of its September FOMC projections that we would end the year with an unemployment rate at 7.6%, not very far from where we are right now. It'll be interesting to see where we are in those October, November, and December jobs reports. Now, Again, as I mentioned, because of that slower pace of recovery, though, you do wonder about what type of uh, more permanent structural damage could be done to the U.S. economy as a result of this long and prolonged uh, recovery period that we have. Another big statistic that I think Federal Reserve officials will be dialed into is the, num is the number of permanent job losers, which we've already drilled into during this show, increasing by 345,000 to 3.8 million. That could definitely be something that continues to hold back this recovery in the months to come. Brian, next week we'll hear uh, from Fed Chief Jerome Powell. In light of this disappointing jobs report, is it more important for him to, to lay out uh, what ammo the Fed has left to, to support markets in the economy? Well, Tuesday morning, as you mentioned, uh, around 1030 or so, uh, Jay Powell will be speaking at a, a business economics conference virtually, of course. And it could definitely be the case that Jerome Powell will emphasize that if this downturn ends up uh, being longer or prolonged, that the Federal Reserve could still do more if it needed to. That was a clear message that he had delivered to markets in that FOMC press conference uh, not so long ago. Now, the Federal Reserve, it does kind of seem interesting because it's already backed up to near zero rates. Uh, it has quantitative easing. It's launched more than 10 liquidity facilities that backstop everything from a risky corporate debt to municipal bonds. But the Federal Reserve has said it could still do other things. Keep in mind that it's uh, had, it launched forward guidance in that last September meeting where it said it's going to commit to keeping rates near zero until it reaches maximum employment and inflation is moderately overshooting its 2% target. But the Fed could still do something like pin quantitative easing to that forward guidance, which it hasn't done so far. It could do something like uh, commit to purchasing X amount of mortgage-backed securities or longer-term dated U.S. debt and pin it to that forward guidance. It can also do a number of other things that would be more dramatic if it needed to, things like yield curve control, which the Fed still leaves on the table, a policy that would involve saying, we're going to buy X amount of 10-year bonds, for example, probably less than that, maybe three or five-year bonds until the yields on those securities are below a certain level, which would depress medium-term interest rates. That's something that the Federal Reserve could do as well. We don't know the subject matter of Jerome Powell's speech uh, next Tuesday, but I think that with this job support, it could provide a little bit more onus on Jerome Powell to reiterate to markets what ammo the Fed does have in its back pocket. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.